everybody. So in this video, we are going to explore an impressive open source model called a stable audio open. So we are going to look at the overview of the model. We are going to look at the installation process. So we are going to install that locally and we are going to demonstrate some capabilities by building a text to sound effect application using the Google Colab. All right, so let's get into that. So the stable audio open is an open source text to audio model capa capable of generating up to 47 seconds of audio samples and sound effect. So users can create drum beat, instrument riffs, ambient sounds, foley, and production elements. So the model enables audio variations in style transfer of audio samples. Okay, so the stable audio open is optimized for generating short audio samples and by using your text prompt. So it marks a significant milestone as we open more on our generative audio capabilities to help sound designers, musicians, and the creative communities. Okay, so one key benefit of this open source release is that you can fine tune the model on your own custom audio data. All right, so here you can read more about the model in the hugging phase, okay? So I'm going to attach the link into in my description, all right? So let's get into that. All right, so let's get into the, so before we do that, some key things to note here is you would need to be granted access to the model. So it's pretty simple. You just click on the allow access and you will be granted access to the model. All right, so inside my collab, I've already run samples of the code. All right, so I'm going to be using my that here. You look at, so I'm going to be using the GPU of 800 GPU. All right, so you can do that if you have enough CPU. Okay, all right, so let's get into that. So I'm going to be installing this packages. So I'm going to do touch, I'm going to install the touch audio, the INOPS, and the stable audio tools. So the stable audio tools is they are training an inference code for audio generation model. So it's going to help us to run the application. All right, so I've already run it. So I'm going to say run. And for first time users, it's going to probably take some time, All right? For this to run successfully, you should have a minimum of 15 GB of RAM to run this successfully. On your local machine so let's give it some time to run uh, we have the packages successfully installed All right so once it's done we want to connect to our hacking phase so what we want to grab is we want to grab our token to allow access to the model so we are going to run this so when you say run, we are going to grab our token. So in order to do that, you go to hackingface.co and you go to settings and you go to access token. Here you will be able to get access to your token, right? So we already have that. So just go in here and you say manage and you invalidate and refresh. So you can even create a new one, right? In my case, I have it here. So I'm gonna copy that and I am going to paste it here. So I'm gonna say login. So you log in, log in successfully. So I'm going to run this block of code. So I'm gonna import touch, I'm going to import the touch audio and so from the stable audio tools, we import the get pre-trained models to pass our model. 
and we are going to get the dot inference dot generation. We are going to put the generate diffusion code, and it's going to help us create our audios. All right. And now we set our device decoder if available and to cheat GPU if available, and otherwise we're gonna use CPU. So in my case, I am using using the GPU. Okay. And now we want to download the pre-trained model and we set up the configuration. So we are running the model, which is here. Let's go back. Right, we are running the model from here. Okay, so we extract the sample rate and the sample size from the model configuration that we've created here. Right, and now we move the model to the appropriate device. Okay, in this case, I'm using my GPU, right? So we should give you some time to run. So we have it successfully run. Now we want to set up the test and the timing conditions for the audio generation. So we create a variable called conditioning. And inside that, we are going to pass the prompt. So we are going to try out with three prompts. All right, so we have samples here. All right, so we are going to do one to eight beats per minute, text house drum loop, and we're going to do several ones. So the second start is we want to do start timing. So this is the timing. We want to set time in seconds for the conditioning and we want to do the seconds total to 30 so we're going to run this all right so the next thing is we are going to generate the audio using the diffusion model with these parameters right so we pass the generate diffusion con and we pass the models in here right so this is the steps so the steps is the sound is Built up gradually over 100 small steps, right? So more steps can lead to a clearer or more detailed sound, right? And we have the CFG scale to be seven. So this is the settings that determines how closely the model should stick to eight prompt. So if the scale is higher, then the sound will be more closely or follow the guidelines provided. All right. And so if it is lower, the sound might be more varied or creative. So the conditioning is, is an additional information or a, a context given to the model to guide the sound creation. So, so for instance, if you want the sound to be a specific type, like a melody or a certain um, genre, though it means that this conditioning helps steer the results in that, in that direction. All right, so we have sigma minutes, sigma mask, and that is, all right, so the sample size is nothing but it's specified the length, the length of the sound clip to be generated. All right, so the sigma minutes, sigma mask is, so we set the starting level of the randomness or the sounds or the noise in the sound creation. And the max is, it says the ending level of the randomness. So it means that a higher value allows the process to explore a wider range of variation and complexities in the sound. So it makes it richer and more diverse. All right, so, so the sampler type is this type. There are several types. The, we are using the DP MPP. So it is nothing but a specific method used to generate the sound. So different diffusion-based sampler method can influence how the final sound turns out, all right? It's much like using different musical instruments or production techniques. It's nothing but the device to run on for the generation. So in my case, I'm using the GPU, and this is nothing but we are creating a variable, and we rearrange the audio batch to a single sequence. So, we are applying this format, right, to rearrange our sequence to make it more sound, to sound more better, right? Right, so now we are the big normalized clip, right? So this is nothing but, so this is nothing but we are saying that 
audio can sometimes be too loud or too quiet. So these parameters are there to make sure it has a consistent volume. So we find the loudest point in the audio and scale it and scale everything else related to that, right? So this is called a peak normalization, right? And we also make sure that the audio signals can only be so loud be before they distort. So we are keeping the values within this range, right? So it will ensure the audio stays clean and doesn't, dist doesn't dist distort. All right, so we have all this clean and nice, all right? And so this is nothing but, so in this format, it means that it is a common format for storing audio because it balances the quality and the file size. So multiplying by this number scales the normalized float values to this format range, all right? To make it more, you now sound more nicer and more clear so i'm going to store this and save it so i'm going to name it so it means that we are going to run this and listen to how it sounds so we're going to save it to output one so i'm going to run this so let's see right so it's done and let's look at the output right so we have the output here so i'm going to download this all right so let's Play this sound and see how this sounds. Let's do this. All right, guys. I, I really hope you like this. Really amazing just to put in a prompt and just create like a sound effect. So yeah, so let's let's check out the next one. So I am going to try this out. So I'm going to check this one out and um, I'm going to run this. So this will be a bird, blackbird song. Someone asked, so let me run this. So it should sound like a bird. Let me run this. Okay, so let me do like output number two and let me run this. Okay, all right, so let me download this. All right, so let's play the second one. All right, guys, isn't this amazing? Yeah, so with this, you can do a lot of, you know, create your own sound, you know, do a lot of, like, embed into animations. You can do a lot of, you can do a lot of use, I mean, apply a lot of use cases with it. So, yeah, so I would uh, attach the link to the um, to the code in my uh, description. All right, so you can uh, grab that and, yeah, so let me know in the comment section how you uh, will, feel about this um, this model and i uh, hope you like this video don't forget to share and subscribe see you in the next one